Hello, how are you? Everybody, hello, how are you, everybody? This is Edgar Fernandez from Sufficient Limited, located in Bramford, Ontario, Canada. Um, I've been uh, away from a month doing some projects and taking some time off after one year that was very, very intense and very exciting as well. But yeah, I'm back and uh, contributing with the community and to you guys to make a, uh, a better place to work free from incidents and obviously helping you to uh, make profits in your business through um, transferring exp my experience from safety to other fields. So today we want to talk about the Federal Drug Administration. The FDA has given uh, 150 uh, forms 483s, that's the name that they called, in the pharmaceutical, com cosmetic and food industry only in December of 2016. So always they published in a, the, the database and um, you can see um, those forms 483s and what what were the reasons why they um, issued those uh, those uh, those fines during uh, audits conducted by the FDA uh, where these uh, issues were given all, all around the globe in the United States I would say 75 percent and the other uh, 25 they were given uh, given on the in Canada, India, and other parts of the globe where the uh, companies, especially pharmaceutical food and cosmetic, uh, uh, they need to export to the United States. So normally they go every two, three years to inspect your facility if you have business or you export this type of uh, products to, to the US. So remember, 150. What were the findings during these audits? That's very important. So I was uh, reviewing quickly to the database. And one of the main findings actually is that um, they said that uh, they don't, f they, they haven't found or they didn't find the um, a very trail or very systematic uh, root cause analysis. So therefore, when they were reviewing uh, your investigations uh, to determine some CAPAS corrective actions and preventive actions, they they couldn't find uh, the systematic approach to find those root cause analysis. So therefore, they issued the, four, uh, the form 483s. That's one of the main reasons. Actually, the main reasons of the those 400, uh, 150 uh, forms uh, 483s they were because they, they there is not a systematic approach of uh, to find a root cause analysis so um uh, on uh, one another thing that i want to tell you it's the uh, fda doesn't accept um, the five Y technique or methodology to find root cause analysis they don't consider the five Ys is a systematic approach so that's the reason why um, you are using that um, that um, that technical methodology, um, it's better that you need to change it because uh, FDA is going to say something about it. But also, I was doing some searching because incident investigation is not only uh, to um, to have a systematic approach, sorry, to uh, to find a root, root cause analysis. It's not only for to avoid forms 483 from the FDA or uh, any uh, fine or uh, or uh, penalties or some findings in the uh, uh, during uh, audits from Health Canada as well. The Health Canada actually performs con and conduct audits outside of the of Canada countries where they have where they export me uh, medications to 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 to, to Canada uh, from India from Mexico from China whatever they they they. They, um, they, wherever those companies are, they go and they perform and they conduct and perform those audits. They do it the same um, two, three years. And actually some of um, the FDA and Health Canada, they work together many times and they can conduct audits at the same time. But our, like I said, root cause analysis is very important also for prevent, um, prevent reoccurrences of uh, incidents. Um, I'm talking about the health and safety incidents. So I was doing some a quick search here in the province of Ontario, and uh, on the month of the uh, August, actually, because the Minister of Labor they published uh, fines and and um, um, and companies they have um, uh, they have had serious injuries, and then they published what's the status of those investigations and how uh, how they ended. So only on the month of August of 2017, actually. Um, 
the the amount of fines the of money in these fines there were six million six hundred thousand canadian dollars only on one month that is too much and um one of the things that i was uh, actually reading it's um, root cause analysis so how we want to prevent to recur to have a recurrence on that and that's very important to have capas capas applies also to the health and safety not only to the cgmps or quality it applies to safety so you do corrective actions to 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 avoid the recurrence happening on the same um, um, on the same place on the same location and then you preventive actions and now you're going to review the whole system to prevent that that's the difference in 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 a, in a pretty quick uh, words so um so they inform, like I said, and the amount of money and the amount of penalty, the, 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 the fines that have been too much, six million six hundred thousand Canadian dollars, only in one month. That's too much. So uh, here is how you can avoid in uh, be fi being fined or having uh, form four four eighty threes, um, warning letters from the ABDA, or being fined for the Minister of Labor or the OSHA. To prevent uh, to prevent um, so, um, injuries or uh, quality issues, and actually applies for the same is not something that you're gonna differentiate. The only thing that's gonna is gonna be different is the information, obviously, and the um, and all the content of the investigation. But the methodology is the same. So uh, I'm giving you on um, this one, two, three, four, five, six six steps actually for um, to 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 have a and a, a very good and actually a very uh, quality um, with a high quality incident investigation. I call it incident investigation uh, for both, but you can call it in another words, depending on what company you work on your quality system as well. So the first one is develop uh, the incident flow chart that will show a series of events that occur to have this incident or to have the non-conformance. That's the right word actually to call it on the CGM pieces, the non-conformance. So you need to, to develop a map. Um, in Sin Sigma, they call value uh, value stream map, pretty much. So it's the same. You, you can apply that concept to mapping the incident from the beginning to the end. So once you map the incident, the second is you need to find the causal factor or causal, factor, causal factors that contribute with the, with the event. And... Um, that's going to be determined. I mean, that's that those causal factors can appear in many um, um, stages of the map. Once you um, once you 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 find the causal factors to a num numbers of questions, now you're going to identify the root cause analysis of each one of those of the uh, to uh, to that that contribute to have the non-conformance of the of the incident. Um, also, I forget to mention that. Also, it is works for, to investigate near misses. The near misses should be treated as an incident as well. Although we didn't, although the near miss is not an incident, in fact, because it's something that happened, but the concept, but didn't have a consequence, should be treated as incident as well. So use this technique as well. Um, so once uh, you have the uh, the root cause analysis, you need to analyze this one in in, in several ways on, on, from several perspectives: human factors, uh, training procedures, management systems, um, installations, engineering design, maintenance, etc. And it's, it's a series of, of questions. Um, I don't want um, I don't want to uh, the, normally the methodology that I used. I don't want to uh, make a promotion of anybody with tab root actually. For me, many times, many years have worked excellent and it's a very systematic approach to prevent these recurrences or non conformances as well. Once you, uh, you identify that, so um, now you need to, um, you can develop CAPAS, corrective uh, preventive actions. The corrective action is the going to prevent that, that incident happen in that location or that non conformant again, uh, 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 that the non conformant occurred again in the same uh, uh, spot, on the same department, on the same procedure, it's, uh, I don't know. In the preventive action, actually, now you're going to review the whole system. So, for example, I'll give you one. Um, you have a non-conformance in an analytical method, for example. So somebody is not following um, 
the procedure. Now you need to review in other analytical procedures from other medications, for example, from other products, what's going on. That's a preventive action. Corrective action is what you're going to fix that specific procedure. So the same for safety. If you have an incident, for example, in a, with, a, with a hoist, you're going to fix that hoist immediately, depending on what was the causal factor and the root cause and, and, and the root cause. But also you're going to review the whole hoist and the, the ways that you handle um, 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 materials, for example. So that's a preventive action as well. Once you have these previous steps, you, like I said, you're going to prescribe these actions. Are you going to make are you going to make a report? So you're going to make a report that's going to con, that's con, that's going to have the map, the the analysis of each causal factor, each root root cause analysis, the root cause, and the capas. This is very important. Actually, you can do it. Not pertinent to the investigation, actually, it could be something out of the scope of the investigation, but that you discover that could be a good opportunity for improvement in the future. You can recommend opportunities for improvement in the report. That doesn't mean that it's going to, you're going to decide it's going to be done, done immediately or not, but you can do that as well. And that has happened in, the, in many incident investigations or many non conformance investigations as well. Once you have the report, you need to communicate this is mandate this is imperative to have a good kappa system you need to communicate the investigation results to the people who are, who were involved or who are involved with these kappas it's very important because to avoid a recurrence you need to communicate what what uh, had happened and what needs to be done to avoid that recurrence and you close the loop and then um, after some period of time you review the effectiveness of your capas and then you can close the uh, the incident on, on your uh, on your system whatever technology you are using whatever system on on on, on sip for example it's uh, you need to determine that the same with the incident investigation you you need to you need you need to uh, verify effectiveness in 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 in, in this way so once you you um, find the kappa, you determine the kappa, you prescribe the, the kappa. Once you pre implement the kappa, and after three or six months, you need to see the effectiveness of the kappa. If not, you need to sit down and reanalyze uh, uh, again. Hopefully, uh, uh, helps you these uh, six steps to have uh, to avoid uh, forms eighty uh, trees uh, from. Or uh, to avoid recurrences in um, uh, and avoid uh, uh, and prevent uh, severe, uh, severe in, uh, injuries or incidents in your facility. You want to contact me? Actually, uh, you want what do you think your uh, uh, your organization uh, would li look like implementing these six steps? Um, call me. Um, you can contact me at www.pharma-chemicalsafety.com uh, uh, on my uh, YouTube channel. To go to the description of the video and then you have, you're going to find my phone number and my web page address as well. I appreciate Thank you very much. And hopefully this video and, and the article that I published in LinkedIn helps you a lot to, to avoid Forms A483 uh, and, and, uh, and prevent uh, 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 severe injuries in your workplace. Our mission in, sufici in, uh, in Sufficient Limited is to protect people's lives and increase profit in 200%. Thank you very much, guys. Again, I'm Edgar Fernandez. See you on the next video. Bye.